We've just learned that one person has died in that semi fire on I-65. News Channel 5's Alexander Cohen in Millersville. Uh, tragic uh, turn of events in uh, in this situation, Alexandra. <laughs> That's right, Amy. We were obviously all hoping that the driver of that tractor trailer would pull through. Witnesses tell me here at the scene that several drivers pulled over and started running into the fire with fire extinguishers. They tell us they could hear the driver screaming for help. And again, the Tennessee Highway Patrol has confirmed that that driver did pass away at the scene. As you can see video in the video, there were viewers who were driving by that sent this to us. It was fully in goal. Firefighters are still here at the scene putting out hot spots. I'm told that this tractor trailer was carrying food products and uh, the diesel that was in that semi was scattered all over the roadway. That is one thing they're working diligently to clean up right now. Again, both lanes of 65 North are still shut down. They're diverting traffic at exit 98. It's causing major backups and some of the people who were right behind this crash have been stuck here for several hours now. It's complete gridlock, but as you can see back out here at the scene, it is still smoldering. The firefighters are still suited up working to put out this fire. Reporting live, Alexander Cohen, News Channel 5. Alexandra, thank you for the update. What a tragic story and another sad story. 24-year-old has died after being shot in the head in the Midtown area. News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy has been on the scene near Church and 19th all morning. And Dan, I know the victim tried to run for help, just, uh, just didn't make it. Yeah, he actually first started trying to drive for help, then crashed his car and got out and tried to run. This morning, that victim has been identified as 24-year-old O'Shea Rutledge, and police think drugs might be the motivation behind this shooting. Uh, this is what it looked like just a few hours ago when police were still out here. All this happening before 10 o'clock when people reported hearing shots fired in the area of 19th or 18th Avenue North and Church. Uh, this is that was the victim's car crashed into the fence. He then got out and tried to go for help, but collapsed outside a nearby business. They called police. Police arrived, took him to the hospital where Rutledge later died last night. His family has been notified. Now police working through all leads. They're hoping to get some surveillance from nearby businesses this morning. Uh, at this time, we don't have any suspect information to pass along to you. We are looking into Rutledge's background. Uh, according to online records, he has been arrested before, so police are aware and do know about him and his background. I am speaking also with a woman who identifies himself as a girlfriend. She says they were identified late last night of Rutledge's passing and say they are devastated by this news. More information on this investigation throughout the day on NewsChannel5.com. Reporting live in Midtown, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. Dan, thank you. Also breaking this morning, a man is shot in the neck in South Nashville, and now a manhunt is on for the gunman. Police say the victim was walking home when he was shot near a condominium complex on Tampa Drive. The victim is expected to be okay, but police could not find any shell casings or evidence. Call Crime Stopper 615-74-CRIME if you can help them. Steve? Amy, we've got more breaking news. We've been watching this morning. A home is destroyed after an early morning fire. Boy, take a look at those flames right here. News Channel 5 Sophie Nielsen Colding arrived there just as the flames were shooting through the rooftop, and it looks like this was a home renovation gone wrong. Well, neighbors told firefighters that the home was being renovated at the time. Now that it's light out, you can see the extent of the damage from that fire. Take a look at some of this video. We got here just before 4 o'clock in the morning, and this is what the house looked like at that point. Big orange flames shooting out of the roof, uh, completely destroying the inside of the home. Firefighters were inside for a while, making sure the hot spots were out, and smoke still continued to come out of the the roof. Firefighters say there was power on in the house, and that's why they think an electrical malfunction is what caused this fire. They say it started in the front right corner of the home uh, near the roof. And if you come back out to us live, I want to show you that just one driveway away on the house next door, take a look at the siding. That's how hot these flames were. Completely melted and peeled back the siding on the side of the house. Kind of looks like tree bark or something peeling off of a tree. That's how hot this fire was. Luckily, nobody hurt in all of this. The home was empty. That's the good news in all of this because this house is a complete loss. Live in South Nashville, Sophie Nielsen, Holding News Channel 5.
Sophie, thank you. Developing news now. Two Fort Campbell soldiers are being held as persons of interest in connection to the disappearance of a fellow soldier. 25-year-old Shadow McLean has been missing for 53 days. Her car was found in a parking lot in downtown Nashville last month, but there haven't been any other clues. Her family hopes this is a sign. They're going to have more answers soon. There's always that little glimmer of hope that maybe she's being held by someone. But the reality is... Um, we don't know what condition she's in, but we just want to bring her home, whatever that condition is. We can't just leave her here. Shadow's ex-husband, Jamal McCray, was also arrested in Montgomery County. It's unclear if his arrest is related to her disappearance. And happening today, one of the men accused of killing a California tourist that was in town in Nashville will be facing a judge. You see there, Joseph Santian. He was arrested for the murder of Teddy Grassett last month outside of the Country Music Hall of Fame along 4th Avenue. Two other suspects are behind bars in North Carolina awaiting their extradition back to Nashville. News Channel 5 will have a crew in the courtroom later this morning. You can download our app for updates. Nashville facing another lawsuit this morning from Comcast now. The cable company is joining AT&T in that big lawsuit over Metro Nashville's One Touch Make Ready ordinance. That measure gives Google the right to move other carrier lines to make way for the Google Fiber gear on the big utility poles. AT&T says Metro doesn't have jurisdiction on those poles to regulate attachments from other companies. Comcast's filing claims the ordinance conflicts with federal law. But Google Fiber is dealing with their own problems. The Internet giant's actually halting its rollout in 10 cities and laying off staffers as its CEO steps down. However, cities that have already started to roll out fiber will continue, including right here in Nashville.